And welcome to the AP edition of Lenny's Place, brought to you by Hillendale Stallions. Today we're going to talk AP Indy and American Pharaoh. Those of you who've watched these videos over the years, this one and before it and they're off with Steve Haskin, know I have a special fondness for AP Indy. He's the one who brought me back to horse racing after I put it aside for many years. And what a day AP Indy had at Saratoga Saturday. His son, Honor Code, provided thrills and chills again by winning the Whitney right on the line after cavorting by AP Indy's son, Bernardini, powerhouse home in the test stakes. AP Indy is pensioned now at his birthplace, Lanes End Farm, and Honor Code comes from his final crop, a crop that numbered only in the 30s because the stallion was having fertility problems at the end. Not many breeders wanted to take a chance on him at that point, but Des Ryan, who manages Del Ridge Farm for the Justice family and plans the farm's matings, decided to take one last chance on the great sire. He sent Serena's cat, a, great, a granddaughter of the great Serena song, to AP Indy. It took three times. She finally caught and we've all been rewarded with Honor Code. Besides winning the Met Mile and now the Whitney, Honor Code has as gorgeous a head on him as you'll see. He's a stunning individual, and the way he runs his races, doing that Silky Sullivan thing from 20 lengths off the pace, is spectacular to watch. The folks from Lane's End took one look at him as a baby, and they couldn't write the check fast enough to buy a majority interest in him from Del Ridge. So next year, Honor Code will take his place in the stallion complex at Lane's End, where AP Indy still resides, and he will walk past a statue of his sire on his way to the breeding shed, and hopefully he will carry on this wonderful legacy. The thrills he has given me these past two months, it's really hard to explain the passion and the emotion that certain horses can bring to us. An hour before American Pharaoh won the Triple Crown, I felt like I'd won my Triple Crown when Honor Code won the Met Mile in that unbelievable fashion that he did. And the Whitney, well, that puts a nice cherry on top of it all. Racing's most popular parlor game these days is trying to figure out where American Pharaoh will run next. The folks who run racetracks, well, they're trying to figure it out more than anybody. Monmouth Park has offered to write a race for him. Saratoga has offered to increase the purse of the Travers if he shows up. Del Mar toyed with moving the Pacific Classic back a week in an effort to pit American Pharaoh against the great Philly Beholder. Word is that Churchill Downs might yet step up with a race at its September meet. The latest I've heard this Del Mar's out. Ahmed Zayed has thrown his lot in with Saratoga, and we haven't heard a word yet from trainer Bob Baffert. Let's try and fix that right now. Bob Baffert, welcome to Lenny's Place. Thanks for having me. Hey, you remember, Bob, the first time we were going to do this was, was back in October. We were going to have fun and crack a bunch of jokes and fool around, and then you went and had a press conference where you announced that a, a certain horse named American Pharaoh was injured and wasn't going to run in the Breeders' Cup. And I don't think I've ever seen you more down than you were that day. And I, and I know that because you actually took an hour and, and talked with me for the whole time, which nobody ever does. But were, were you afraid that day, Bob, that, that we were never going to see the best of this horse that you really knew was a, was a budding superstar? No, it wasn't. I, it was something that was just, we knew he would heal up from it, but it just, you know, the timing of it all, you know, there's never good timing when you're right on top of a big race. But, you know, I've, I've, I've had a lot of horses that I've had to scratch or get hurt right before a big race. But I think he was probably the one that really affected me the most. It was uh, pretty uh, it was pretty tough because I really thought he was our best chance to win a Breeders' Cup race, and he was just, He's shown us so much, his, his brilliance and his coming off the, 
the the two races. The Del Mar race was uh, spectacular, and then the um, the other one he was just galloping there. So it was. I was actually very emotional, and I I sort of teared up. I remember at that press conference, I was really teared up because I just I knew what a what a great horse he was, and my wife Jill, she almost didn't go to the Breeders' Cup on Saturday because she was, you know, we were all pretty uh, pretty down and out. Yeah, Did, was it a blessing of the skies looking back at it? Do you think? Well, I think it could have been. You know, he was like, um, you know, they did run pretty fast that day. It was at hot pace, and uh, yeah. it was uh, he would have had to run fast, but you know, he runs fast anyway. But um, we just turned the page, looked back. I said, you know, after that, luckily uh, Byron came through, and uh, he picked a perfect game, so uh, that sort of got us out of our funk. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned the emotion. I, I wanted to bring that up. I mean, the Belmont, it was just everybody was screaming and carrying on and so excited. Uh, I watched the Haskell from home. And, and after the race, I, I had tears welling up in my eyes. I, I've talked to veterans of this industry who had the exact same reaction. And I know you, you know, watching you after the race, you were choked up and could barely give an interview. What, why do you think this horse brings so much emotion out in people? I don't think it's really, it's not only the horse, but I think, you know, in the where we live in now, I think he brings a lot of joy to a lot of people that, I, I keep hearing that from people that aren't even race fans, that he just, he just gives them a lift. You know, you're, you know, things are, you know, the world, things are, you know, we, we need a little good news every once in a while. And so, um, this horse has really bought, brought good news to the sport. Our sport has been needing some good news with all the negative stuff you, we, you know, everybody writes about. So uh, when he came along, I think generally in sports, I think anything, whether it's going for the home run record or whatever, people just really latch on to something like that. And, uh, you know, they've latched on to this horse. And who, what better? Nothing but horses. They don't get in trouble. They don't get DUIs. I don't have to worry about them getting in trouble. You know, so he's, he's, he's great to follow. And plus, you know, we sort of let people realize what a sweet, kind horse he is and where you can get in there and lay down the stall with him. And he just, he, he's just a, he's a lover and he just loves people. And so he's got sort of, that's why I get emotional because, I just feel he's he's a gift. He is a gift. So he came from another planet or something, but he is just every time he runs, he shows me something different, something more. I mean, Victor Spinoza, when he got off of me the other day, he just comes back and he goes, Wow, man, wow. I he shows me more. I mean, that's all he was saying. And so I said, Well, you know, you were you know, it was like the race was just I he gets you I mean, real emotional, he just that's why I get emotional. I, I cry. I think of my parents. I wish they were around to have seen a horse like this. So they were always, my mother was always telling me, oh, you're going to get your one. You're good. But you're going to get a great one. You know, so, and they weren't around. So it makes it, that's why I get so emotional. Yeah. How, how did he come out of the Haskell, Bob? Well, it was, you know, he was, you know, the, after the race, it wasn't too bad. But when he shipped back on uh, Monday evening, he got in around 7. And he looked, he looked like he was tired and he was, but he was supposed to be, you know, it's the humidity and uh, the shipping and the running, he, you know, he was usually, he'll stay a day and then ship the next day, whatever. But uh, he left the next morning and you could tell there for, for two days, he was, every time I went by a stall, he was, he was out. He was, he was laid, laid out and he's a smart horse. He knows how to take care of himself. And um, it took him about, Four days, and all of a sudden, I see. And then all of a sudden, he started coming to the front of the stall and jogging a couple of days. And then all of a sudden, he just perked up. He's wide awake. Looks like he uh, he, he he just filled back up. You know, he's he's pretty intelligent horse. So, um, but I've, I've kind of figured out pretty well and and what he's been through. So um, I just I, I know what what to do with him when he comes back and what can, what he likes. And so uh, it makes my job a lot easier. Yeah. You, you mentioned the, the travel and it, it, let, let's assume he is giving you the right signals. I, is the travel a big factor in how you decide what the next race is? Is it the condition of the race, meaning three-year-olds versus older horses? Is it the 
timing of the race. Uh, if you had to rate those factors, what, what are the most important to you as, as you decide who, what the next race is going to be? Well, as everybody knows, uh, you know, Mitch is I, he's made it pretty clear that if he's ready and doing well, he'd love to run him in the Travers. So I'll give the horse every opportunity to, um, you know, if he's if he's 100 percent to, um, you know, if I if I bring him up to uh, Saratoga, I'm up actually up here. I'm in the barn area doing a little recon, checking out if I brought him up. What what barn to be in and how we're going to work this, whatever. But uh, it's like, you know, it's like when he comes to town, it's like it's like bringing the Beatles, you know. So. Um, we have to make sure that everything uh, looks, you know, like we can deal with the the crowds and everything else because he has such a huge fan base. But um, I wish I got a dollar for every, for every question, like, is he coming? You know, I got here last night, and uh, that's the big thing. But, you know, it, it's a lot of added pressure on me. And uh, But at the end of the day, I'm going to let Farrell. He'll tell me if he's, if he's ready, and hopefully we're going to breathe him um, so much as I will probably breeze on the Del Mar on the weekend coming up week, maybe on a Sunday, and we'll know more about him. Um, see how he's doing. So if he's if he shows me he still has that energy level and it looks like he's he's holding, he's moving well, and that, that's that's my main concern. Does uh, your relative lack of success at Saratoga does that concern you at all, or, or is this horse so good it really well, doesn't matter? You know what? When I hear that, it's sort of like I don't know what they mean by lack of success. I don't, really, I don't, I don't run that many horses here, yeah. but we've won the Alabama, the King Bishop, the Travers. I've won all the big races here, so I don't know where they come. The lack of success. I mean, I've run some horses in the Travers. I didn't, I shouldn't have run. I was throwing darts up there coming off the Haskell, but I mean, the only other, the the, the one I brought up here was Point Given, who was. I, you know, he was, he was the one that he won it because he was the best horse. But my other horses, they were, um, they weren't, they were, they, they couldn't handle it. This horse, I've never had a horse that has shipped. He's been on a plane so many times, and he holds his form. I think that's what makes him such a great horse that he does not. I brought him out. I'm, believe me, I brought him out the other day. I'm looking for an excuse not to come. And so. And I brought him out the other day, and uh, I had to wait for everybody to leave. But every morning he's got, you know, he's got the lurkers, and um, we brought him out to look at him. And he was his hair coat and everything was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, look at this horse. He's, you know, you're supposed to, the hair is supposed to start getting a little bit of a, a dull look or a little something, or you know, they start getting that look like, hey, we're. Um, I'm getting tired, Bob, but he looked like a picture of health. And we're looking at him like, and he's just jumping around like, why, why, please don't act like that. Cause, uh, you know, I, I, but uh, he's, 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 he's pretty damn spectacular, you know. He's telling you he wants to go to Saratoga with you. He is just tough. I mean, he has got, he's, I don't know where he's from, but he's, uh, that genetic thing, I, I like, we need a clone. If there's going to be a clone horse, they all want to clone him. There you go. Well, you've done such a great job with him, both on and off the track, and you've done so much for this sport as far as promoting it for 20 years now. So best of luck, Bob, with him, and uh, thanks for joining us. Well, uh, thanks for having me. And uh, like I said, after after I breeze him uh, next week, we'll, uh, we'll have to sit down there with uh with his eyes and but believe me we're gonna we're gonna do what's right for Farrell. so he's you know he's he's owes us nothing and um i'm not gonna take feel the pressure if he you know he's if he's really on his game then uh there's there's we're, we'll try to make the, the the race if not we'll just um wait for the next one yeah go go find the next derby winner tonight bob thanks a lot Thank you. All right. I want to thank Bob Bafford for joining us today. I want to thank you viewers, of course. I want to thank my friends over at Hillendale Stallions. 
We're going to be taking a little vacation after this show. Uh, as the song says, we will see you in September. Till then, bye-bye, everybody.